Welcome back to Living Local. We're out here at Coffee Hound in Bettendorf, and today I'm learning what it takes to become a barista. From the science behind coffee making to the different knowledge required for brewing devices and techniques, a lot of technical skill goes into brewing that perfect cup of joe. Today I am joined by Courtney Walters. She is the general manager here at Coffee Hound, as well as Dylan Bajeski. He is the store manager. Guys, thank you so much for letting us stop by. Thanks for, right. Thanks for coming. All right, so first of all, Dylan, how, what are some reasons that people decide to become a barista? I think people decide to become a barista based on uh, they want to learn more about coffee. Um, there's a lot of complexities to it that people don't really get and then they just want to learn more. That's why I started. I just wanted, I didn't know what a latte was or what a cappuccino was. Um, a lot of people, for us, people like dogs and they, uh, they want to come out here just because it's dog themed. Um, and then people just like coffee, so um, free drinks and stuff like that. Wonderful. Yeah, when you love something, you tend to want to know more about it. And I think you're right. The dog theme definitely attracts a lot of people. As a dog lover myself, you walk in here and you just see the, the dog signs all over the place. It's a wonderful atmosphere. How long does it usually take to train a barista? It usually takes about a month. Um, to get them at least ready to be able to serve people consistently. Um, it, it's an ongoing process though. They never really stop learning and getting better at things. Yep. Um, but it depends also on where they're coming in from. If they already have coffee experience, if they already know what a latte is and cappuccino, then they have that knowledge ahead of time and it takes a little less time. But the skills just take rep repetition to really get down. So Yeah, it really is a craft that you need to hone, a skill that you need to practice. Um, when it comes to the training process, what do you find to be the most challenging part for people that are in training? I think just timing, uh, getting drinks down fast and not losing quality control is mm -hmm. probably the biggest part. Knowing when to time your shots and um, like when you're mixing syrups, not overdoing it, yeah. stuff like that, I just getting the, fast. The most individual thing that people find the toughest though is getting really good milk foam. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that technique takes a long time to acquire, I yeah. would say. So yeah, getting yeah. everything down and getting it done fast is, is the hardest thing. Now how can a barista use the science that you guys will teach them and then also the techniques to, to be really responsive to customers and help walk them through maybe what a good decision would be? Just knowing what they might like elsewhere, so if they don't necessarily know what they like coffee-wise, but they know what they like to drink or eat otherwise, you know, they, they, they like sweetness, they don't like sweetness, they like bitterness, they don't like bitterness, that can really help us to figure out what they might like to drink. So just knowing sort of the, the profiles of the coffee ahead of time and then applying that to what they're telling you, even if it's not about coffee. Definitely. I love how it all wraps in together. All right, Courtney Dillon, I am ready for my crash course in becoming a barista. Let's do it, guys. All right, guys, I am ready to see what it takes to become a barista. I'm here with the training manager, Whitney Hess. Uh, what do you enjoy so much about being a manager? I really like being the training manager because I get to teach. And so I get to start the baristas from ground zero and work their way up and see them learn and improve. And it's really rewarding to see that. All right, Whitney, the first step in the process is how to brew coffee. Yes. So walk us through the steps. Okay, so the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna take your beans and you're gonna weigh them out. And we have specific amounts we use if it's a house coffee versus a flavored coffee. We'll grind the beans and you always wanna use the proper grind for the proper filter. And so we'll use it for paper filters because that's what we use here. And then after we do that, we'll put the grounds into the filter, stick it into the brew basket, and then we'll brew the coffee. And we always make a large amount at a time because we have plenty of customers <laughs> and we never want to run out. Wonderful. All right, now Brittany and Whitney are going to get our blend on. So uh, how do we make a blended drink? All right, so first thing you're going to do is grab your blender. That's the most important part. And the first thing that goes into the blender is always the liquid. So what we're gonna make today is a vanilla bean frap, oh, which is yum. one of our more popular ones. There's no caffeine in it, mm -hmm. um, and it's really kid-friendly, so that's pretty awesome. And we're just gonna make a 16 ounce. Okay. So we're gonna use five ounces of water. Five ounces of water. All Here's right. your pitcher. And then the great thing is that it uh, has the measuring right here, so five yeah. ounces of water. So go ahead and pour that to the five ounce line. Um, too much. It's too much, that's okay. That's the best part about water. You can put it right back into the pitcher. So you're... We got the vanilla bean powder here. Yep, so there you go. I was gonna say it sticks sometimes. <laughs> and you're just gonna wanna make sure that's level. So go ahead and shake it a little okay. bit. There you go, go ahead and dump. And then one more time. Oh, it smells good. Can't go wrong with the frappuccino. Exactly. And we're gonna add some ice back here from the ice bin. 
perfect. Good job. And it blends for 25 seconds. 25 seconds, all yep. right. Well, there you go. You're a natural. Look Thanks. at you go. And then the goal with this is you want to shake it up a little bit first. Yep, it'll kind of splash at you. Shake it up. And then when you pour it, mm -hmm. you want to pour it in a back and forth motion so that it doesn't all fall out of the blender. I see, once. I see. Okay. okay. That's Wait, beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Then we need to put some whipped cream on top. Frappuccino you... art. And that's how you make a blended drink. Yes, so that's the vanilla frappuccino. Taste testing. Every barista while we train them has to try the drinks that they make. Oh my gosh. They can describe it to the customers really accurately. Right, amazing. Up top. Woo! 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 Holla. Okay, Whitney, now it's time to make a latte. Yes. Okay, what's the first step? So the first step, we're going to pull our espresso shots, okay. which is that concentrated coffee mm -hmm. that's the base of a latte, and then we're going to steam some milk. Yum. So we're going to make a hot latte okay. today. And when you pull espresso shots, our ideal time here is 24 seconds. That way they're not too short and they're not too long, but they're just right. Awesome, okay, okay what's the first step? So first thing you're gonna do is grab the brew head okay. here. So go ahead and pop it to the left. Hold it right there. Yep, you're gonna compress it into the filter. Good job. Oh. Use the plastic part on the metal. Perfect, what that does is it gets all the little extra grounds so you get everything that you measured the first time. Okay. So you're gonna slide it up into the group head here. So go ahead and grab the cup. Okay. You're gonna place it right underneath. So what that is gonna do is it's gonna pull two shots. And this is that concentrated coffee that when you add steamed milk to it, it makes a latte. Ooh. So this is the base of it. It should be a caramel color when it comes out. It's usually pretty hot. It's very strong. Yes. The latte is a great option for people that do want something that doesn't have a lot of acid acidity. To it. Right, yep. The Milk base to it is what brings down the acidity, so it's more of a smoother drink. We're gonna steam some milk. Yes. So, so you have your cold milk. What you wanna do, this is your steam one. Pull your steam one out. You always wanna grab it by the rubber piece so you don't burn yourself. Yeah. And try to put this at about a 45 degree angle towards you. Take your milk pitcher and you're gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle opposite of you. The goal is to make a whirlpool effect. Turn this on. <laughs> Take this out. You always want to wipe down the steam wand and clear it again. That way you don't cross-contaminate any dairy products with non-dairy products. And then you want to tap it. Make sure you get any bubbles out. And then what you should have left should look like almost like wet paint. Ooh. So see how it has that like matte finish? Yeah. And then that's how you steam the milk. Go ahead and grab your espresso. It's a little hot, so just be careful. There you go. Awesome. And then with the milk, you just pour it on top? Um, yep, but we're gonna use a spoon. Okay. So what you wanna do is pour, when you pour the milk, you wanna pour milk first, and then you wanna pour froth. And so we'll wait till there's about an inch of room. There you go. And so you can take the spoon away. Okay, and then just pour? And then you can just either free pour, and then you can kind of scoop some froth out. There you go. Oh, yeah. Good. So see how that top has the white finish? Yes. Awesome. Whitney, why is presentation so important when it comes to uh, creating drinks here? Presentation is super important because not only does it benefit the taste of the drink, but it also benefits the look. And nobody wants a drink that doesn't look pretty. And so our goal here is that everything is Instagram worthy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Whitney, thank you so much for the barista in training today. Of it was course. an absolute blast. And it looks good. It tastes good. And if you guys would like some more information on Coffee Hound, you can go to qccoffeehound.com. More Living Local returns right after this.